Hey, this is going to be a quick video about the Unify NAS, Unify UNAS Pro. And people have been asking questions, so I was thinking those repetitive questions deserve an answer. So I'm going to quickly go through those most popular questions and try to answer them. So the first question, can I get this NAS if I have no other Unify products, no switches, nothing like that? And the answer is yes. All you need is a phone. It has Bluetooth built in. So we'll find the NAS and you can set it up just like that. You don't need any switches. So you can access this NAS with a local IP address where you set for each LAN port, or you can use Unify Proxy, which is kind of VPN service, which bounces through the Unify servers and gives you this encrypted secure access to it. The other question is, can you have two of these Unify NASs connected in your home network? And the answer is yes, because every LAN port you have will have its own dedicated IP address, so you can connect to one NAS or another NAS very easily. The other question, can you expand this NAS or can you merge those two servers together if you've got two of these? And not at this point through Unify software, but there's third party software, clustering software that links together all kinds of storage devices. It could be Unify, it could be QNAP, Synology, any other brand. It merges all that storage into one volume. So this is something you could explore. Another question, can you run the LNA service on this NAS so you could access your multimedia on your TV and phones and other network attached devices, client devices? The answer is no, you cannot set up the LNA service on this NAS. If you want to do that, you will need a dedicated device. You could have NVIDIA Shield TV and then map your Shield TV to this storage location through SMB and this would be a way of accessing your multimedia. Otherwise, you can have a dedicated mini PC like NUC and set up your multimedia server there or install Plex there and point your client app to this storage location. This way you will gain access to all your files through your multimedia app. The other question is about USB. Can you connect USB drives to this NAS? To either access your files or back up your NAS to a USB external drive? And the answer is there is no USB ports on this NAS whatsoever. So the answer is simply no. The other question, can you mix different drives in this NAS? And the answer is yes. As long as these drives are SATA based, you can have any capacity you want. Just remember, if you choose different capacity drives, the biggest drive in your NAS will be seen as big as the smallest drive. So keep that in mind. So if you have four 8 terabyte drives and one 20 terabyte drive, this 20 terabyte drive will be seen as 8 terabyte drive. The other question, which LAN port do I need to connect to? Either SOP or RJ45 based port? And the answer is, it depends what speed do you wanna get. If you want one gigabit, connect through that RJ45 port. If you want 10 gigabit speeds, you need to connect through optical SFP port. Each LAN port has its own IP address, so it's very easy to know which port you're connecting to. The other question, do I need to fill all of the bays in the NAS? And the answer is no. I would recommend you to add at least four drives in this NAS, but in reality, I would say you should fill at least six bays. You can keep the last seven bay free. Normally it's dedicated anyway for hot spares, but um, that's what I would recommend because the admin panel doesn't have very simple features to add or expand the existing RAID. So it's better to set it up for once. And this is the setup you're gonna have for the rest of the time. But if you did choose to have fewer drives, this will also work. The other question is about transcoding multimedia. Can I transcode 4K videos or any sort of videos from this NAS? And the answer is no because this is just a file storage server. There is no transcoding feature uh, enabled there. You can access those files. You will need to download them first to see them. If you want to have transcoding feature, you will again need to introduce NVIDIA Shield TV or something else like a local multimedia player device, which has transcoding feature built in. And then you point that device to your storage location on your UNAS and then all the transcoding will be done from that device. The next question is about compatibility. What sort of drives are compatible? And as I said earlier, as long as you use SATA-based 
hard drives or SSDs, it will work on this NAS. The next question is about the RAM. Can you upgrade the RAM? The answer is no. The memory is soldered on the motherboard and it cannot be upgraded. The next question is about NVMe cache or SATA based SSD cache. Is that possible on this NAS? And the answer is no. There is no NVMe M.2 slots. And also if you put SAT SSDs in one or two HDD bays, in admin panel there is no option to enable cache. So the answer is no. The other question is about RAID options. What are the RAID options and what do they mean? So they have two options. One is RAID 5, which is basic protection. This is one drive redundancy, which means one of those hard drives can just break down and you're not gonna lose data and you're also not gonna lose access to your data. You can still upload and download files as you would normally. You will need to slide the drive out, replace it, and you'll have it all rebuilt. The other option is mirroring. That's two drive protection, which is RAID 10 in this case. So if you have six drives, three drives will be mirrored with other three drives. So three and three, copy on one and copy another one. So if one drive fails on one side, the other side will have a copy. If two drives fail on one side, you still have a copy. But keep in mind with RAID 10, you need to be sometimes careful because if one drive fails on one side of the mirror, another drive fails on another side of the mirror, your data will be lost. This is not like Synology or QNAP where you have RAID 6 protection, which actually allows any two drives to fail. The next question is which RAID option is faster? RAID 5, which is the simple basic option, or RAID 10, two drive protection, which one is faster? RAID 10 is much simpler RAID and it doesn't ask CPU to do all the calculations and parity data to put across these drives. So quite often you'll find RAID 10 to be faster. I'd say both RAID options will have very similar speeds. The last question is, can I migrate drives from Synology, QNOP or other NAS to this NAS? And the answer is you can move those drives to this NAS, but you will need to format them before you use them. So you'll need to wipe them clean. The system will do it for you and then you can use them for storage. You cannot migrate all the data existing on those drives, especially if it's RAID, to your UNAS. You'll need to wipe those drives. I hope these answers to these questions were helpful. If you have any more questions that you want me to answer, you can put them down in the comments or just come to noscompares.com website and make inquiry there and ask us those questions there. See you next time.